Aloha, and welcome back to a new episode of the Ohana Packers Edition podcast. The podcast where two dudes from halfway around the world talk everything green and gold. I'm Mike, and that's Iowa Joe. Today, we're going over the fourth victory of the Green Bay Packers in the 2023 season. Joe, finally, we, we've we crossed a bunch of landmarks for the offense. Forget the defense, but for the offense, more than 20 points for the first time in forever. Um, almost 400 yards of offense. And the offense looked exciting. It wasn't like pulling teeth. <laughs> Joe, how were you? How pumped were you after today's game? Well, and especially against a team that nobody figured that they were going to beat. I mean, everybody was always all being Debbie Downers about this game. I mean, even well, I guess I wasn't on the preview show, but I wasn't even looking forward to this game because I just figured that they would, you know, tear the hell out of the Packers. But you know, all side. I, if I had to honestly say it, this was probably the most complete game they've had in a long time. Yeah, the defense was doing some stupid things, but they were at least, you know, there when it mattered. Now, I, I know some people are going to say, well, you know, the Sun played a lot of that. And, you know, the, the, a lot of the bad plays were the, was the Sun and the receiver's eyes and whatever. But, hey, it happens. You know, that's that's what you get when you're not in a dome. So, but yeah, like I said, most complete game that they've had in a long time, the first 300 yard passer since 2021, uh, two touchdowns, no interceptions. This is the type of game that we were waiting for from Jordan love. So, you know, I'm excited. I I'm, a, I feel a little bit better going into Thursday's game than I was previously. But yeah, it, it it was a great game. Yeah, uh, let's just lead into the offense. Um, kind of said the big points. You know, they they finally broke twenty points, even if just barely. Um, and they've been trending towards four hundred. I think they've been like three ninety six, three ninety eight, three ninety seven, or so. They've been right on the brink of averaging four hundred yards of offense the last three games. And against you know the the Chargers were probably the worst defense of the three that they faced in the last three games. So. Good to see them. Um, their point, point point totals start to match their um, you know, it's slowly creeping up to matching their yardage production. And a lot of that is on the back of Jordan, you know, playing his best game of the season. And it was just great to see him, you know, like we said, you know, we were hoping that the Rams game would be a you know a potential turning point. And so far, so good. You know, that's three ducks in a row at this point. And you just want to see him um continue that upward trajectory that he's been on the past few weeks. Um Really, you know, first off, clean game. Um, I don't think he really had any turnover worthy plays. There might have been some throws to the outside that potentially were on the fringe of that, but overall, I thought his decision making was really good today. Um, he had like maybe two bad throws. Um, the the obvious one is the Musgrave on that wheel route in the third, fourth quarter in the fourth quarter. But outside of that, um, I thought he was. Uh, I thought he had some really good ball placement on his intermediate and especially outside the number throws, um, and his two touchdown throws. Uh, the the kind of pop pass throw to Watson. It was a really good bucket shot to get it over the defenders at the goal line, and then the Dobbs one. That one was kind of fringing on again leaving it too short. But I think that is the whole like give your guy a chance and don't run him out the back of the end zone. And at least this time he was throwing it to the one guy who wins jump balls on this roster yeah. so far. So, and Dobbs made a hell of a play on that thing. Um, properly identified how deep the throw was, went up, snagged that thing out of the air, and then like turtle over the ball so that um, Mike Davis couldn't get in and break it up. So, I, I thought Love looked like he was in control all game. Worked around some bad play around him. You know, there were like five or six drops by. Um, you know, again, Aaron Jones had a rough one in the in the flat. And side note on Jones, it sounds like he avoided something major, so that's always good news. That's good. And news. Then, I didn't um, see that. I, I I know I was seeing thing. Uh, so I think Lafleur said something in his press conference. They were at, or he was asked what the plan was, and he said that you know it's all in Goody's hands, but they're pretty sure that they have an idea on what they're going to be doing for the Thursday night or Thursday game. Yeah. Um, so 
but yeah, it's um, it sounded pretty positive. The initial returns is that his ACL is intact, and it's just a matter of the MRI showing whatever else is in there. So, um, but yeah, I, I really liked Love's game today. What? How did you think he played today? Like I said, I think this has been the best game he's played ever. I mean, this is even better than the short amount of time he played in the Philadelphia game, you know, last year. So I, you know, I said this one other time that if what would make me feel comfortable with Jordan Love, the first step of the way would be a 300 yard game, multiple TDs, no interceptions. All right. We're, we just made that check on the list. You know, it's kind of helped with, you know, if you had other things on the list, like lead a comeback, you know, stuff like that. He's already did that. He's just never has done the 300 yard, multiple TDs, no interceptions. Sorry, I'm being distracted because I turned the Denver game on and they just pulled ahead of the Minnesota Vikings. So there's your little news break for the moment. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I just, I, I'm not ready to say, yeah, ex extend the guy and, you know, go. But this is one of those games that we were waiting for. One of those complete games, one of those games that he was making great throws. Like you said, yeah, there were a couple of throws maybe he shouldn't have tried or maybe he should have took a little bit off or he put a little too much on. But he looked like a true leader out there. You could even see at one point when he got frustrated with, I want to say it was Dontavian Wicks where they were saying Wicks ran the wrong route and he full on was, you know, you could see it where he was yelling at Wicks, like you ran the wrong route and you know, Hey, what's going on. But uh, yeah, I mean, it was a great game. It, it really was. I, I think the next thing would be like we've said along just now he's got to stack successes. I know the next game is going to be one of the roughest game he's he's going to have, but let's face it, you know, they played a pretty – I know some people were saying that they aren't, but the Chargers defense is not like horrid. Now, granted, they did lose Joey Bosa. I don't know what we're hearing on the injury front for him, but – you know, they did drop Bosa, but friggin' Khalil Mack still had two sacks. And, uh, you know, it's not like they have scrubs at corner or safety. You know, they got Derwin James. They got Asante Samuel Jr. Uh, uh, what's the other one they've got going on Mike over Davis. there? Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it's not like they're completely useless. You know, it's not like the Denver game. It's not like the Raiders game where, you know, we should have just torched them. But so it just now we got to go into Thursday on a short week with uncertainty, at, you know, obviously at uh, running back, maybe a little bit of questionality with uh, inside linebacker because Devondre dropped. So we just, you got to stack them, stack successes. Yeah, no, that's going to be the key. And like I said, the big thing is that we've seen Love do that the last three games. Um, I know he had the two interceptions against Pittsburgh, but really his games the last three weeks against the Rams, Steelers, and now the Chargers, his his play has been on an upward climb. So um, it's just good to see him do it. And yeah, it, it, it's really important that, you know, this is a big part of the season there. You know, they like you said, they had their chances at what was the the soft part of their schedule and they dropped a bunch of those games, you know, bad ones. They look really bad against um, like Atlanta. Now that game looks like a terrible drop at this point. Um, you know, the Denver and Raiders games, maybe not as bad. They're not total bottom dwellers. You know, they're kind of hanging more around 500 at this point in the season, but still at the time kind of inexplicable to be as you know, incompetent looking as they were and inept on offense as they were at the time. And like I said, when in the open, it looks like we have a functioning NFL offense at this point, which is night and day from where they were a month ago, you know, after really after they got their face kicked in by the Lions on Thursday night football, 
what was that all the way back in week four um they were scuffling around for the next four weeks and so it's just good to see them trend upwards and the fact that it's love who is like leading the charge you know it's not like the run game has really picked up the run game struggled again today it's it's been on the back of love and it's not like he's just throwing a bunch of you know he's not he's not getting um bad calorie stats like uh justin fields was in the preseason where he's just dumping two yard screens off and they're turning him into like 60 yard touchdowns or anything like that um he is you know he is the one pushing the ball down the field getting guys completions in the intermediate zones um you know like touchdown to dobbs that was a deeper throw so it was good to see him you know connect on one of those again um and overall the progression is just really nice um you know like even like you said, Joe, his command in the offense, you know, whether it's kind of just being the the leader in the huddle or just how he looks, you know, he's back to being the cool, calm, collected guy in the pocket again after having some weeks where he looked a little, a little choppy back there, you know. So it, it's good to see him get his, you know, figuratively, well, and figuratively and literally get his feet back under him after a rough month in the middle of the season. Here's a stat for you to show you how he's been hitting deep passes better. Dontavian Wicks, three catches, 91 yards. He averaged 30.3 yards a catch. So, you know, and he was hitting Dontavian Wicks at least, you know, averaged 30 yards per, you know, pass on to Wicks. So that just shows that he's having more successes down the field. It just seems like the short, passes are what's hurting him more and we've seen that you know the drops by jones the drops by you know during the screens and everything so once he fixes that up we could have a quarterback yep absolutely i on that note i did have a tweet in the game it was after the miss to musgrave on the wheel route i said uh, and Mark Sanchez was kind of Johnny on the spot pointing it out. He's like, look at his footwork. It's all janky on this throw. And I was like, ah, Rogers played the long game by <laughs> exposing love to too much wonky footwork. And it, <laughs> it sabotaged his development that way. But but seriously, it's it's just really good to see love um, love improve his game. And kind of like well, I pointed who was out in it? the art. Was it McCarthy or was it Clements that they said would – like tied rope around I think it was Rogers' Clemens. legs to get his leg, you know, to get his footwork down. Yeah. I think it was Clements. I, I well, think that was a Clements mechanism. So well, maybe needs we more need of just, that. Needs yeah, more we of need that. more of that. Put the ankle weights back on. <laughs> yeah. But duct tape. Uh, the the other side of it, you know, it, it it's not like love is throwing to chop liver out there. The the good thing is that these young receivers are starting to um, stack their successes as well. And, it, you know, like the article I wrote, that's kind of that it's a chicken or egg question, right? Like, which one do you need first? Do you need the better quarterback play to bring up the receivers? Or do you need the receivers to be going along at least at the same pace of development? So, like you pointed out, Wicks, um, Wicks had a hell of a game. I think I, I'd have to go back and count, but I think on his three catches, the longest – um, air yard was maybe 15 yards, but there was a stat I saw where he's the first Packers uh, receiver to have three catch, the first rookie Packers receiver to have three catches of 25 yards or more. And when you think about it, like who some of the rookies in Packers history are, that's an insane stat to think about. Like that Sterling Sharp never did it. So I mean that that puts him in some rarefied air. So. Wicks, you know, he had a bad drop, but overcame it. You know, he was a 60% on uh, targets today. Um, Dobbs, like I said, you know, uh, Paul Noonan wrote an article about he's one of the most inefficient receivers. But you know what? Um, he's the reliable guy right now. And um, if he becomes like the Donald Driver where he's the guy you look for on tough spots, third downs, whatever, and, you know, Wicks becomes your wide receiver one or whatever – so be it, but Dobbs is that guy that uh, Love more often than not seems to want to look for on third downs because he just trusts that if I get it near him, he's going to bring it in. And... I've always said that Dobbs was going to be the Devontae Adams type. I, now, I, I want to preference that with saying I don't think he's going to be Devontae Adams, but he's going to be that Devontae Adams type where 
he's going to be the route runner. He's going to be the one that breaks himself open. He's going to be the one that probably can be more reliable at the catch where, you know, when they were drafted, everybody was excited about Watson. I was more excited about Dobbs because I thought he was going to end up being the more refined receiver and yeah. Watson was going to be the, the potential guy. And, you know, I know it's still early and everything, but that's the way it looks like it's working out right now. Now to kind of take a break, Denver beats Minnesota 21, 20. So suck it, Minnesota. You lost to Denver too. <laughs> eye for an eye, baby. <laughs> but yeah. And then Jaden Reed, you know, Jaden Reed was their run game today. I, I know that the counting stacks look pretty for the Packers run game. You know, you, you look at it at um from a high high level view it's like oh they they got 100 yards rushing and 3.6 you know it's not great but it's not terrible and then you look at what the running backs actually did and you're like oh no yeah. it was all bad <laughs> it was terrible well it doesn't um, help when two of your running backs get injured and you're having to rely on just one guy yeah but uh yeah Jaden reed three for 46 and he averaged 15.3 yards that brought the whole average up but um yeah so it, it was done through the air today, and uh, and then... and then what confused me was all right. You're having a success running these end arounds, these jet sweeps with Reed. So you're gonna stop and give it to Watson. I and think that work. one was too telegraphed. Like you can't, <laughs> you can't, um, you can't give it to him the first time he runs one, <laughs> like in a game, because it's like. Just put the neon light, you know, the Vegas neon light sign on, on his back on that one. So, yeah, that one was kind of like a, all right. <laughs> like, like I do agree that you got to try get the ball in Watson's hands any way you can. But that one was a little bit too telegraphed for yeah. my liking. <laughs> well, and I have to say that I kind of, how do I want to say that? I, I, I don't completely blame Watson on it, but he didn't look like he hit hard. He just no. kind of danced around a little too much. Yeah. And, he kind of, I, I know what you're getting at. It kind of looked like he was like, oh, we're going to lose yards here. And once he like cleared the line of scrimmage, he was like, okay, like I saved it. This is good enough. Kind of like, yeah. Well, it, and I it think did honestly, kind of if he would have went full speed instead of the dance around, he probably got, could have got more than just the one yard because they wouldn't have been ready with the type of speed he has. They wouldn't have been ready for him. Now, would he have been able to take it back like, you know, Jaden did? No, he was never going to take it back, but he was he could have gotten more than what he did. That was yeah. just my view. I know you, your favorite thing is to say is you got to watch the All-22 when it comes out. So, I mean, I could be reading it completely wrong, but that's just what I seem to think. I think, I think a lot of times on those plays, you know, everything is like, everything is getting blocked to the outside. It's getting blocked to the outside, and guys are – um, too reluctant to even take that look inside to try cut it back against the grain. And um, Watson is definitely a guy, even this year where he's not super healthy, he's a guy where everyone's like, oh my God, that's the alien athlete. Get outside of him. And if he just sticks his foot in the ground and forget cutting back, like just cuts up the field at some point, you know, like if he just dives kind of thing, you know, he is six foot five and, you know, that's, you know, that's like, at least a couple yards kind of thing and stuff. So I know, I know that it's not as simple as that, but I, I, I think um, I can't remember who it was earlier in the game, but Dylan or Jones had a run earlier in the game where no, 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 it was Reed on another one of those, like um, those kind of, those kind of runs. And it was kind of like, if you just cut that thing back, you had it and stuff. So um, yeah, it's like, I know where the play is supposed to go, you know, on the whiteboard, but sometimes you got to show a little more imagination out there. So um, well, I think today, yeah. I think people need to, I, I know you're going to go on to the next point and I'm kind of bouncing around here. Nah. But uh, the, uh, the touchdown to Watson. Now I believe it was LaFleur or maybe it was love came out and said, that wasn't in the game plan at all. Yeah, it was LeFleur Love. LaFleur wrote game. it up on yeah, Love uh LaFleur wrote it up on the sidelines because of what he was seeing out there. That tells me that LaFleur has an eye to do this. Yeah. We just need to see him do it more often. 
you know, and, if you got to stray away from yeah. the game plan a little bit, do it because the game plan isn't always going to be great. You can go yeah. in there thinking you're going to be able to do it, but you know, to quote Mike Daniels, to quote Mike Tyson, everybody has a plan until you punch them in the mouth. Yep. And that tends to happen too much to the Packers. So if you have, if you can do it, now I'm not saying make your whole thing just drawn up plays during the game or anything, but take it, you know, if you can, if you can go through, let's say a quarter or two and you see what the defense is giving you, write the damn thing up, send it in. Yep, absolutely. And like that note from love, you know, that's the thing is like, it only gets, it only gets a spotlight when it works, but when it doesn't work, it's like, Oh, he didn't try. He didn't try anything different. He didn't make adjustments kind of thing and stuff. And that's the part where I'm not willing to give up on LaFleur as a play. You know, some people are like, don't let him call plays, but it's like, you can't not have him call plays because that's the whole point. You have him as your head coach kind of thing. Well, and who and... else are you going to have call plays? Stinovich? Yeah. <laughs> we saw what Stinovich did in the preseason when LeFleur gave him play calling abilities. <laughs> so, yeah. So, um, I, I, that's a good one to point out. And I I, I think it's good for Watson to get one on, another one under his belt, um, you know, making positive plays, especially after, you know, you have the week that he just had never hurts for confidence so hopefully they can um spring for that forward but um you know the other thing that was really good to see is that uh Musgrave had a solid game um and Tucker Craft Tucker Craft they used him on you know the play that I absolutely hate which is like just an out route by a tight end but Craft is the guy you want doing that and he made it happen on that route you know yeah and I know that he even Kraft even himself kind of made fun of himself after the game and was like, ah, oh, big stupid feet and and all. But I mean, that was a heck of a play to hurdle a guy on the sideline. And um, well, you and know, it, the fact that he happened to step out is just kind of like, yeah, eh, it happened. And it was but, just barely stepped out. Too. Yeah. It wasn't like he full stepped out. Yeah. I mean, it was still out. I, I'm not saying that the I know what you mean, though. Yeah. Anything. Well, yeah, I know. Um, but it was before, was that? After the, I, there was a moment where I called it out on Twitter, where um, I, they had they had Musgrave out where it was like a one on one situation, and they threw it to him in hopes that he would break the, you know, break a tackle and everything else. And I called it out. It's like you've got a guy with the ability to do it, but you're going to give it to the guy that doesn't have the ability to do it. Yeah. And I, I can't remember if that was before or after. The I think it was graphic. before. I, I think I know which play you're talking about. It was kind of like a, it was like a stop route or something, like a stop yeah. or a quick out or something like that. Yeah. And and then the next thing you know, they're giving it to Kraft, and Kraft is you know, uh, he he makes one guy miss, he jumps over another guy, and yeah. So feed him. I've been saying it for a long time now. Feed him. Yep. He's he's been making really good strides as a blocker, and you got to reward him for the work he's put in on that, you know, in that part of his game because you you took him, you know, he he basically was his offense at South Dakota State, and you told him when you drafted him, all right, that guy's getting the ball, you're gonna block all game, and so it's like like I've been saying, like throw him a bone every once in a while, like it doesn't have to be some sophisticated play or anything, but like at least let him know, like hey, like you know, you're banging your head against the wall, but we appreciate what you're doing. So here's, you know, like here's, here's a couple pass plays kind of thing and stuff. So it's nice to see him and anything, as long as it keeps Deguara out of there. I, <laughs> he had another one today where he completely yeah, whipped know. on some blocks. Yeah. And... and I know he did get hurt. So we'll see what uh, the end result of that one is, but, um, and then kind of something we've talked about in previous weeks. Um, you had, Three guys with six targets, one guy with five, a couple more with four. So it, it's just nice to see that they're kind of getting back to just spreading the ball around. And I know that's partly because, like, no one guy is necessarily, uh, you know, deserving of Devontae or Jordy or Jennings type of targets at this point. But at the same time, like, they don't have that guy. So um, they shouldn't be trying to force feed one guy targets at this point, I don't think, until – you know, someone really starts to separate themselves. Uh, and 
I've said it that in all their games where the offense has looked the best, they've spread the ball around. You know, like the Bears game, the Atlanta game, the Saints comeback, and then the last three weeks, it's when they've spread the ball around where they've their offense has looked the best instead of trying to well, feature and, one guy. If you remember right, that was some of the best uh, uh, years Rodgers was, was having when he had the, all the, the those nice receiving groups and he could just spread the ball around. Yep. Not when he was just targeted, targeting a Devonte or whatever. He had some of his best years when he had the groups of Jennings and Jones and Cobb and Driver or, you know, th- those groups where he could throw the ball to five different targets, seven different targets and gain his yardage. So let, if Love can do it and these guys can step up, you know, this is a little bit early, but I still think they need a decent another one or two pass catchers in the draft coming up. Uh, you know, keep rebuilding your 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 group. They got away from that too long, and then we were getting to the point where we only had one right wide receiver that could be targeted. We only had that one guy. So, you know, do like you used to do. Draft a guy every year, just like you did the offensive line. Draft a guy every year. Yep. It never hurts. No. Yep. It you just gotta keep reloading because that's what it is. They uh elite primes are fleeting in this league, so you just gotta keep reloading. Um the whole line was just good enough, and I <laughs> I don't know whether to emphasize the just or the good enough in that sense, but you had some kind of wonky plays like the one where um love got stripped sacked on. That wasn't his fault at all. I don't think anybody blocked anybody on that play. Um, you had a couple, there were a couple other situations like that where you just had guys come screaming in on different plays and stuff. I think the one where Love got called for intentional grounding was another one like that. And I, I saw that people were saying like, uh, Ryan went in for uh, Runyon at one point, but I was looking back at the highlights and all the scoring drives were with Runyon on the field. So I'm not sure exactly which drive that was on or whatever. Yeah, I kept but... seeing that too. And I, I didn't remember seeing him out there. But. Yeah, and I was like, especially looking for that on the replays. But I was like, the like all the big scoring plays, uh, Runyon was in at right guard. So, um, I don't think anyone on the O line like the best play on the O line was Zach Tom recovering the strip sack. So, um, I, I think Tom had a good game out at right tackle. But that that was the biggest play of the game was securing that strip sack to uh, keep possession at that point in the game. But, um. Other than that, like I said, and then I thought Lafleur. I, I the only complaint I really have is I, I wish, I wish he would have just let Love throw it at the end of the game, just to you know you live and die with. At least you say you you tried to secure the win because it you know, I mean we'll talk about it in a sec, but uh, putting it in the hands of the defense almost burned Lafleur at the end of the game. So uh, I, I I thought third and five or six or whatever it was with um you know under the two minute warning at the end of the fourth quarter, I thought it was a decent enough down where you kind of let Ru- love have some kind of run pass option look or something like that. And um, give him a chance to like stress the defense and potentially make a play. So, uh, but other than that, I thought Lafleur called a really good game today. I, I thought he, uh, especially down to one running back. I thought he um, prudently put the ball in his quarterback's hand without like making it, just definitively it's a drop back passing game kind of game. So I, I thought he managed the injuries to Wilson and uh, Jones pretty well, you know, speaking that they both happened in the second quarter. So um, I, I thought it was a, especially the second half, I thought it was a good game from uh, LaFleur today. Definitely. Now did they, I, I know they said it was a shoulder injury for Wilson, but that was kind of weird because it really didn't look like he did anything. So the one of the not um not pro football doc, but another one of the ones that often tweets about um in game injuries. He was mentioning that he's questioning if uh Wilson dislocated his shoulder because of the lack of like you say, and like even Sanchez was kind of saying is like I don't see anything. You don't see like the kind of contact where you're like. Um, oh, he broke his collarbone or, oh, he, you know, he definitely sprained his AC joint. You know, he didn't fall on it or anything like that. It wasn't even hard contact. That's why I thought Wilson tore his bicep because, um, uh, because of the way, like he kind of, he kind of, yeah, or his pec because of how he like 
kind of went to stiff arm. Uh, I think it was Kenneth Murray. And then, like, you see him start to reach, and then he starts to pull his arm back in kind of thing. So I was like, oh, is that a muscle thing? But um, it, a dislocated shoulder would also make you roll on the ground in pain. Yeah. So, yeah, so that – um. I didn't see anything, but I'm hoping that um, Wilson will be able to play on Thursday. I, th- you know, I-, I think he's had some decent plays here and there. He looks, you know, he looks assertive in the run game. I know he only gets like two carries a game and stuff, but I like how he runs. I, I like that he is like that decisive, no nonsense, one cut and go. Is it necessarily the right cut? Maybe not, but he's just gonna go and burrow his way for whatever yards he can. And sometimes that you know, he'll pop one out like he did against the Rams. And sometimes he just gets like two, but I do appreciate a guy who will just like, ah, screw it. I'm going to go get whatever yards I can at this point. So, well, and um, you know, we've said it for a while now that the Packers run blocking hasn't been great either. So, I mean, you can't put it all on Wilson. So hopefully it's nothing major with him and maybe he has a shot at playing, but you know, otherwise they are going to have to sign somebody whether they want to or not. Uh, they do have that Merriweather on the practice squad, but it sounded yeah. like Dylan even got banged up during the game. So there's no way yeah. they're going to go in it with a banged up Dylan, a banged up Wilson, and an unknown on the practice squad. You know what yeah. they need to do? I don't care what they need, what anybody says. Tyler Goodson's still over at Indianapolis's practice <laughs> squad. He know the playbook. Especially, if, I know they said that it's not like long term for Jones, but if he's even on the fringe of like three weeks, you just put him on IR and you bring Goodson or somebody in because, yeah, you you need the roster spot. And I think they're back at fifty three at this point. They they keep towing the line and then like yeah. signing people late, so I, I I keep losing track of what exactly they've got or not. So uh, they and we're gonna know soon. Like they're gonna have to make a decision tomorrow, basically, because. Because it's a short week, you got to get that guy. You know, like you said, um, Merriweather's the only one in the building. That's why Goodson is a clear like choice. You kind of look at him. Hell, like you never know if they. Um, I think I'm pretty sure um, Taylor's in uh, New England on the practice no, squad. Not Taylor, but um, uh, Lou, Nichols. Lou Nichols. Yeah, he's on the the Philly practice squad. Like those are the kind of moves that you're kind of like. Okay, that, that's what you got to do. The only because- thing with Nichols is, is he wasn't in the system long enough to know the playbook. You know, like a yeah. good center or a Taylor. Yeah, but at least he's got some kind of leg up on, you know, like, I, I know what you're getting that he didn't play in the preseason, but at least he'd have some kind of leg up on anyone yeah. who would be brought in, like, just cold off the street kind of thing. So um, it, it'll be, in, I, I think the what they do tomorrow is going to really indicate how injured Jones, like I said, if they put just flat out, put him on IR, you know, with the opportunity to return him later, or if they're like, nah, like we're going to play it out um, with him, play it out with Wilson, you know, what they do tomorrow is going to really kind of tip their hand as to how injured each guy. And like you said, even Dylan was a little dinged up. So um, yeah, they, I think they the said tell. his was a hip. And that's yeah. the last thing you want to deal with is a hip when you're when you're running back. He's been running so good the last few. Like I, I know that he still will miss a cutback and things like that, but he just looks so much more aggressive and um just aggressive and decisive. Yeah, it's not necessarily the right lane every time, but at least he's just kind of dropping his pads and saying, screw it, like I am 250. Let's just go get whatever I can and stuff. So you know, I'll be honest. Of- if he would have been running like this all year, I think he would get another contract. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I still don't think he's fully... Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm not saying... I'm not advocating for any of that. I'm just saying that I, well, no, I'm just I'm glad sure that the light has come on and to. he is being, like, back to being... You know, the guy we saw in 2021 where it was like, oh, like, you can kind of see the vision of what they were thinking of and stuff. So it's just good to see him get back close to that. And my theory is that when he broke his rib against the 49ers in that playoff game, I think psychologically it it's messed with his head in like taking extra hits and all that kind of stuff. So um, who knows? We'll never know, but I, I do think it tracks back to that. But um, yeah, big day tomorrow for the Packers because based on their track record under LaFleur, especially 
tomorrow is going to be there like we practiced. <laughs> I think or, somebody yeah. said, and I don't know if it was a big decision maker or not. But maybe it was LaFleur mentioned something in, in a presser. But I think this is all three days this week are just going to be walkthroughs. I wouldn't be surprised. Like, the only reason I could see, like, anything more is because you've got, you know, the you had um, the two running backs go down. We're not sure what happened to Devondre. Um, you had a couple other guys. You kind of got dinged up during the game. So they might need – walkthrough should be enough, but you never know if they might go like a shell day kind of thing just to get a little more reps on the field. But I kind of don't expect them to practice – I know they're not going to practice tomorrow. They're going to do the, like, today was an estimation. And it'll be interesting to see what they do on Tuesday because um, they've kind of split it. Yeah, they've kind of split it. They've they've made it a mental day, and they've also made it a, like, yeah, we're going to run through, do even if it's just half pads, like, walk through kind of thing and stuff. Well, you know what they need to do is just use one of these days as nothing but, like, a yoga day. (laughs) Guys limber up, stop all these soft tissue injuries. Yep. So, but after all the flowers we've thrown on the team, the defense, <laughs> and I shake my head because this is going to be another one of those games that gets thrown on the, they only gave up X number of points. And now people will be like, they only gave up 20 points to this really good offense today. And it's like, okay, <laughs> yeah, I know that's the facts. I know that's what the scoreboard says, all that kind of stuff. But you cannot dispute that giving up six and a half yards of play is not sustainable. <laughs> and four drops change this from four drops change this from a runaway Chargers win to whatever you want to call what it turned into today. Because that opening fourth down, and, and that's the thing too, is it's not like um it's not like Green Bay broke up any of those passes. Those were all flat out drops. Like the the you know the Chargers gave away a first down. They gave away eight points in the red zone on two Keenan Allen drops, which was just completely astoundingly inexplicable. And then the Quinton Johnson one, like that would have made um, Lafleur's decision to not be more aggressive late in the game. You know, on that on Green Bay's final drive, look kind of dumb. Um, <laughs> Of course, the one time Barry's like, I'm a run cover one. <laughs> it's like, oh, and, and it was like seeing LaFleur say like, oh, it was great to see him do it. I was like, really? Like, you guys, you you have captain play it safe as your defensive coordinator. <laughs> and the one time he decides to be aggressive is the time it should have gotten him burned. And it's like, yeah, that ain't it. <laughs> like, it's just one of those... <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, well, I agree. I mean, the defense was. I do the credit defense... them for forcing the fumble. Like th- that right. was. Yeah. They did just enough to let the offense, you know, do what it needed to do. Yeah, I, but again, this is another thing where I don't think this helps Joe Barry's case for staying on. Um, I'm worried it, that it does, and that's what I makes know, me sick but... about this kind of game. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, injuries again. Devondre dropped out. Uh, Keyshawn was kind of being, was kind of banged up a little bit. Uh, I know you have the rookies flashed on here. Uh, Anthony Johnson Jr., Valentine, uh, Carl Brooks. I, I, I got to take a moment and say, Fox, do better with your, your commentators. Mark Sanchez just friggin' sucked today. And, you know, we know this is a conservative le- uh, 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 conservative uh, officiating groups. If they didn't think that hit that Anthony Johnson Jr. delivered in the, in the end zone was, uh, if they thought that was a penalty, they were going to throw the penalty. We all know that. There's no way they're going to let that one just go. So if they're seeing it and they're not thinking it's a penalty, penalty, it's not a penalty. So shut the hell up. I thought you it was a penalty. Like- I thought he got away with one. So, um, 
But yeah, yeah but you, you get what I'm saying. You know, yeah, 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 they're yeah, not yeah, yeah. shy from throwing the flag on that stuff. I mean, the Packers have been burned on it before. Yeah. But it just, if I didn't think it was, I thought he hit him just enough that I, I he wasn't going to be able to stop because he was already in motion. And I think he hit him just at the right angle that there was no way they could have called. Yeah, the replay it. makes it look not as bad, but it is one of those where just how it looked live, and especially because, like, I don't know, the way it looked, it looked like it was delayed enough where the ball had hit the ground kind of thing, and it, it just from my point of view, that's where I was kind of like, uh, like, and I was just kind of waiting for a flag to pop out, but, um, I mean, Beggars can't be choose, and of course it didn't matter because they scored a touchdown on the next play. But um, it the 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 bigger point is I liked seeing that out of Johnson because I I know that like he's a feisty player, you know he does play physical, especially for a guy who was a cornerback. But it's good to see that they have someone who's like willing to throw himself around back there. So um, I, I do like that aspect of it. I, I think that's important to see from some of your secondary players. Um, he's got to get more playing time and yeah. I'm sorry, but Jonathan Owens needs to stick strictly stay on special teams. There's, there's no excuse. And he just made LaFleur's comment from Friday look so stupid because, um, that touchdown that he gave up was like, that was just horrible, bad. <laughs> like you get, and that's not even a receipt, you know, that's not Keenan Allen or Quinton Johnson. Who's dusting you. That's a, that's a no-named undrafted free agent tight end from nowhere division four or something like that that dusted you on the sideline and left you grasping for air. So, yeah, whether Ford is back this week, whether Savage comes back, Owen should not be above Johnson Jr. on the on the on the ticker tape um, for the 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 depth chart. Like, it's, and honestly, if it were me, he'd be on you know packing his bags and on the bus tomorrow. You know, yeah. bring Vinny Sapp up. He at least can give you uh, the special teams reps uh, and play some defense when needed. So I, 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 I know people are all all about the Simone Biles thing, but it's not worth keeping a guy on the roster that can't play the ball just because of who he's married to. Yep. So just um just waiting to see what happens next week yeah and I yeah it's hard to tell what you know we'll we'll know we'll be doing our preview uh we'll be recording it well, Tuesday no, night dropping it oh no preview this week no preview this week just kidding yeah, I yeah. will just tweet out updates for practice this week so right um unless yeah. you want to do something on your own I, I'm not thinking there's gonna be a preview this week just because of the short turnaround. Got it. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. If anything, maybe we'll just do a quickie. I'll just do a quickie to like update the injury stuff and all. But yeah, I kind of get the feeling if Ford wasn't even questionable this week, I kind of don't feel like he's going to be back this week either. So um, should get more snaps for Johnson. Like that's and like we, you and I have been yelling this for a, a couple months already. Like there's no point in not playing him, especially with Savage out. So um, it, it's inexplicable to not have him see the field at this point through the rest of the season, especially when, yeah, he's had some, you know, he's had some missed tackles and stuff, but the guys who are supposed to be your good veteran tacklers, they've missed a lot of tackles too. Yeah. So like at least put the guy with some coverage ability out there. So yeah, I, like the, I, I, all the excuses for why Owens and even Ford should see reps over Johnson. I don't, I don't listen to any of them because they don't make any sense to me at this point play the rookie, figure out what the hell you have there and move on at that point or, and, you know, just go, live with the, live with whatever the outcomes are. I agree. I, and same thing, you know, with the rest of it, Valentine, I know he's getting the bulk of play right now, but even when Jair comes back, if Stokes comes back, just let him play, you know, I think uh, I think there's a chance that Valentine's going to be your nickel at that point. You you kind of free him up to do a few more things and also because I think if Ja comes back, Valentine is the one who goes to the bench, not Val B. Valentine <laughs> goes to the bench, and then um and then yeah, if Stokes is able to come back, because what is it? We are at 
where are we? I think this is four weeks now. We're getting pretty close. Let's see. Was the Broncos? Yep, that was four games. So uh, Savage and Stokes are able to return this week. I don't know if they will. Um, I, I don't be... know if they've ever come out and said what the extent of the injury of Savage was. Yeah, it it's kind of been in the dark. I so I and I I need to just tweet. Well, and the good thing is that they do kind of note the guys if they have opened up their 21 day. So we'll see, um, you know, they do press release that if they do that. So, um, but I kind of have a hard time, especially if Lafleur's already said that they're not going to do more than, you know, walkthroughs. I think it's a stretch to expect either of them back this week. Oh no, I, I don't expect either of them back. this Yeah. Week. So we'll keep an eye on it. Let you guys know. But um, I think that the, the secondary they rolled out this week, the only exception would be if is if Ja is able to come back this week or not. That would be the only difference. So, well, I think expect- Lafleur said that uh, or Jair practiced Friday, and Lafleur said that he's doing much better. And he even, I think he even said that there was a possibility he could go. Well, Schneidman was saying that the, it sounded like the expectation was he was going to go today. So, but I um, think because of the short week, they just went ahead and said, all right, just set it and we want you back for Detroit. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, hopefully, you know, that would be a big thing to get back this week. So, and eh, got a, got a stump for my Wolverine. You know, Schneidman had the article that they need their, Hundred million dollar defender to produce more. Well, Rashawn got a sack, and the the ultimate irony of it is the sack he got was a total like coverage and offensive pass protection breakdown sack of its own. So it just kind of shows how you know on one end, I, I know that Snyderman was more referencing like Rashawn's pressure rate was down the last few weeks, and I think while it's a counting stat, I, I think that doesn't give enough credence to what the offenses they were facing were doing. But um, it, it was good to see him get the counting stat that everyone gets their eye on. So just to kind of quiet that storm a little bit. So big week for Rashawn this week. You know, this is going to – this Lions O-line is probably the best O-line they're going to face all season. So, um, you know, kind of like we were saying going into week four, they've gotten their butts handed to them by this O-line three games in a row at this point. So got to flip the script at some point and get – you know, and try to take it back to them because – that's how you're gonna get to go. You know, that's how you're gonna stop them. Is you gotta, you gotta fight a mano a mano in the trenches, slow up their run game, and make Goff beat you. So, I don't have much faith in it because it's still a Barry defense. But you know, big week for Rashawn to you know try get it off on the right foot. Well, and I know people are kind of down on the Lucas or Lucas Van S right now too. But I mean, he's he's still raw, he's but he's fine. He's, he's getting fine. pressures like, and he's and he's setting the edge fairly well compared to what others on the team are doing. Yeah. People um, are just mad that he's not getting, you know, he's a first round pick, but he barely, you know, it's it's that whole thing again. And it's the same as, you know, the why did you pick Rashawn when you had the Smith brothers? And uh, and at least Barry plays the reserves more, you know, like that was the whole thing with 2019 was it was like, Oh my God! Are Zadarius and Preston going to make it to the playoffs? You know, there was there was that stretch where like Zadarius was going out every like third play of a game kind of thing, and they were still playing like eighty percent of the snap shares and stuff. So, um, I, I think Lucas has been fine. You know, he hasn't had that big splash play. You know, his biggest splash play was um when he ragdolled that Rams tight end a few weeks ago and got the the quarterback hit against um Brett Rippin, but. I, I think he's been playing well. It, it's one of those where until he gets the counting stats, it's not going to shut anyone up. But it's not like, like you said, he's not getting, he's not getting his lunch fed to him by um, the, the linemen that he's facing. He's beating up the tight ends that try to block him. And you do see his number flash in the backfield every now and then. And he's still pursuing the ball. Well, you know, in, on, in terms of effort plays on plays that are away from him. So I don't I don't have a lot of complaint of what I'm seeing from Van Ness. They're not, you know, they're relying on him to develop, improve this season. They're not asking him to go and play like they're not even asking him necessarily to be edge three. Like they're like, you 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 learn the ropes, you know, get your feet wet, all that kind of stuff. And I, I think 
I think the better, the best days are ahead of him, but I, I'm not at all disappointed in what he's doing. Like, I, I just think that that's more on the rest of this defense than it is on him, if that makes sense. No, I, I, I agree. I mean, people are going to say, oh, well, you're biased. You're a homer anyway. And so. that's why I've got on the soapbox for you because, <laughs> <laughs> because I, I think we're on, we're in, we're in lockstep on the Van Ness pick. I, I thought it was the no brainer pick. I, and, I just think that people who are looking at it purely from a, well, he hasn't had a sack since week one. It's like, okay, like easy there, bro. <laughs> like just chill. <laughs> right. And you know, not everybody is going to just pop off right off the bat. I mean, even Rashawn didn't pop off right off the bat, even though yeah. he was, you know, like you just said, you know, he was fighting for reps when he came in when he was drafted. So it is what it is. I I would be concerned if, you know, we were getting blindside, you know, it, the tackle was pushing him all the way back and throwing him yeah. into the, you know, dumping him into the stands or something like that. Yeah. But he's not. He's holding his own. Yeah, the plays, you know, the stats aren't there, but you got to give him time. Yeah. And, you know, but it just seemed like every day this week I was seeing – article after article and comment after comment that oh well are, are we already seeing a bust out of lucas van ness and it was that a wasted pick and why didn't they take this one over that one and it's like guys come on why are we always second guessing these picks give them a chance before you second guess anything yeah it's he's gonna be a good player like i'm not even gonna say why he won't i i I'm convinced that he's gonna be at least a solid player unless the worst happens. So like I, I I'm not worried at all. Like it's it's if he doesn't make it, it's not gonna be his fault. I'm just gonna put it that way. So yeah, that that's all I've gotta say on Lucas. His time will come, and I, I'm not at all concerned about it. Oh, I uh, I'm not concerned about it either. Hell, let's <laughs> draft a few more Iowa guys. Yep. But um Special teams, the big concern is, okay, I know Anders missed one today, but I think the long snapping has was the bigger problem. You saw Whelan out there looking like a receiver, trying to snag some of these passes, um, not, not passes, but some of these long snaps. And I thought, I thought that, um, that, that bodes really well for, um, <clears throat> excuse me, bodes really well for Whelan because, you know, that was always a question for him coming in as the new punters is like okay like he's especially for o'donnell who's like a you know a vet who's been around for a zillion years so it was good to see wheeling get the ball down and um you know give give anders the opportunity but you know you would like anders to make a couple more of those but both of the the um the missed extra point and the missed field goal um it was off of like a snap where wheeling had to like overextend himself just to make sure the ball didn't get past him and stuff so um you like to see him make those kicks every once in a while, but I, I think that's a Orzik problem more than it's an Anders problem. Right, and you still got to remember that this guy would get in his head when he was still, you know, when he was missing. So, you know, he he likes to overthink things instead of just doing it. Yeah, and I, I could see him overthinking when that kind of stuff happened, and that's what led to the you know, being off just a little bit. Yeah. So give him a little bit of time. Let him, <laughs> I keep seeing Wendell Ferreira. I love you, Wendell, but you got to get off of this. You don't draft kickers. He's been pretty good considering what we yeah. thought he was going to be. So yeah. you just got to let it be. They did draft him. You know, I'm glad they didn't pull a, san francisco and take him in the third round or anything yeah i know <laughs> but you know the last two kickers on this team have been drafted kickers yep. and you know the last one was pretty damn good yeah so uh overall it's it's fine you know he's even with the miss today from field goal you know he's still what is that he's still at 82 over 82 percent and that's the thing is like Crosby's stats are more, you know, he was really good, but 
he wasn't ever elite. Like his stats are all just from being around for forever. So well, I was going to um, say Mason was, I don't think he ever was above like 90%. Was he? No, no. The, except for the one, what was that? 2021 or whatever the year he made all of them or 2020. Other than that, it was, no, it was 2020. Cause obviously 21, he had that weird Bengals game, but yeah, like he had like, there was a point where his average was hanging like at 79% or something like that. So, um, Anders is doing fine. Like I, I, I think he's doing all right. I thought Whelan was punting pretty good today, and you know today was like it, it wasn't a frigid day, but you know it's starting to dip towards the low forties. Um, and it was good to see him um still getting you know good height and distance on his punts today. Um, and I think the Chargers only had one return, so um the biggest okay. critique is like you'd like to see him get a couple more to nail inside the twenty yard line kind of thing, but. I think Whelan's doing all right. We'll kind of keep tracking it as the next few weeks go because obviously, like I said, we're getting colder. And then... Um... So, all right, you were right with the 2020, he was 100%. 2019, he was 91%. Oh, there you go. All the other times, it's either been high 70s or mid to low 80%. Yeah. So... Not Tucker. <laughs> He's not Tucker. <laughs> right. But yeah. So yeah. But I mean, we've said Like it. you said, after what we were preparing ourselves for, it's been not bad. <laughs> like I, I like I, he he hasn't just like olayed a bunch of them or anything like that. So yeah, yeah. and and you know, again, we've got to wait with him and Whelan just to see what happens when the cold sets in. And the snow is flying and all that, but so far so good. And I'll take what we've got. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> and the last one I have here, uh, coverage units were solid, but damn it, Dallin Levitt, get off my roster. You are pointless. You, you are uh, yeah, a pointless I, waste of a roster spot. And I mean, I'm if, all for if giving. If this... can't get rid of his binky. He can go take the Raiders' job this off season. Well, yeah, I'm, that's what I was just gonna say. I. I'm all for giving Bisaccia his guys, but when they're even hurting what's going on, then just cut cut loose. Get yeah. somebody else. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> Dallin Lovett is such a waste of a roster spot. It's it's not even funny at this point. But MVP, <laughs> who you got? <laughs> Honestly, there's so many of them you could go with right now. I'm going to take the easy way out and just go Jordan Love. And, you know, he's been – or he, this has been his best game. It, it's easily his best game. So I I think just go ahead and give it to him. Sounds good. I'll, I'll also take an easy way out, and I'll just say the receiving room for helping him look as good as he did today. Uh, like I said, you know, it's not the, like – oh my God, they made like seven highlight real catches or anything like that. Like, honestly, the Dobbs touchdown catch was probably the most highlight realsy of the catches. Um, we kind of pointed out earlier, but this was one of Love's best games in terms of ball placement um, all season. So, but, you know, um, I, I know I said that there were like six drops today, but when it mattered most, those guys made the plays that needed to be made out there and, you know, they converted all afternoon long. So, um, it was really good to see that from uh, this receiving core that's had its up and downs uh, this whole season. So it's, you know, just like for Love to be trending upward, it's good for the receiving core to be trending upwards to this uh, through the past few games as well. Definitely. Yeah. LVP, who you got? Jonathan Owens. <laughs> that's just, I mean, there's so many of them. Again, there's so many of them you could pick from. But that one, I've got to say, is it uh, Jonathan Owens? He missed tackles. He was slow in in coverage. I, I like you just said with Levitt, you know, I, I wouldn't. It wouldn't break my heart to see Jonathan Owens off the team tomorrow. And you just named mine. Levitt is mine. But oh, uh, one one point I forgot to bring up in the recap: Zane Anderson does exist because he <laughs> made the tackle on the on the Chargers' one punt return. So Zane Anderson does indeed exist, or someone at least ran out there with his uniform. Yeah, on. So, I think it was it was some 
somebody else <laughs> who was here for uh, I, I, who was here for uh, alumni week i know i know tremont was a different week but <laughs> who's, who's here this week but well no, it couldn't have been this week uh, it was J.C. Treader and Brian Bulaga. Oh, so they're, the, yeah, there's, there's no way they those guys. Uh, I don't know. Bulaga looks like he slimmed down a little bit in retirement. Nah, I'm kidding. No, those knees. I don't think those knees are going to get a chance to to get out there and chase. Well, somebody he only down ran like straight. That. He was only going straight when he made the tackle. But all jokes aside, it was good to see. You know. We beleaguered the point for a while, and it's like, why are they using a roster spot on the, you know, not even necessarily like the 53, but it's like, he's been hurt with a hamstring, put him on IR kind of thing and stuff. So, yeah, like, it, it, you know what? It's good to see him out there and make a positive play on special teams. So I'll, I'll take it. You know what? Um, it, it's, if it, he's, it's finally come to fruition that he's made a positive play, so be it. I, I'll take it at this point. But Joe, Anything else for us this week? I mean, over for the most part, you know, the defense is going to be the defense, and we've said it the last couple of weeks, but this stretch, you know, the Chargers, they dodged a lot of bullets. They they, they, they rolled winners on Russian roulette four times in a row. But, um, you know, other than that, I, I think it's looking, you know, the, this team is trending upwards and everywhere else heading into this Detroit game. But what else... Anything uh, you got going into Thursday night's game? Not really. It, it's Thursday day game. Day game, um, that's right, yeah. Uh, Not really. I mean, they just got to build on what they did today. You know, I, I know we said it where everybody says the Chargers weren't a great team anyway, but they're still a tough team. Yeah. Hopefully this, you know, preps them a little bit better to go into Thursday's game against Detroit. It is in Detroit. It is on the dreaded, you know, Ford Field turf. Uh, I, I know they did change out, so, you know, they did change up the turf a little bit, but I think it still is turf. Uh, so, yeah, I just, hopefully, you know, they can build on it and just let them, you know, go out and have a good game. Yeah. You know, the vibes are looking better. So um, never, you know, can't can't discount that. So hopefully it leads to another win. But that's going to do it for us today. Um, like Joe mentioned, we probably won't have a preview, but we won't lock that in. I might be, have time to put something together this week. Um, try and get something out on Wednesday if that's the case. But that's going to do it for us. The Packers move to four and six and head into a Thanksgiving uh, Thanksgiving duel with the, with, not the, with the Lions. Um, thank you for listening to this episode. Uh, please follow us and the podcast on Twitter. I am at Kawano Mike. Iowa Joe is at Iowa underscore Joe 86. The podcast is at Ohana, Ohana underscore Packers. Please go check out our website, ohanapackers.org. We've got a bunch of um, good uh, blog posts and all of the uh, streams of the podcast episodes are available on there for your consumption. Please follow the pod on your favorite podcast apps. Give us a subscribe, a like, and even if you're not liking it, please give us comments to review. Um, we do appreciate those. Um, like I said, that's going to do it for us this week. The Packers are four and six going into a big time game against the Lions on Thanksgiving. Wish you all a happy Thanksgiving week and aloha.